Monster episodes 28 and 29. So Schubert is happy because now he has Carl, and Carl's calling him dad and everything. And this guy who was in hired by Mr. Schubert to investigate, you know, the location of his son, is kind of like, oh, that's cute. He's always been so icy, but now he's so happy. So the detective goes off and um, pursues other projects. He's talking about how he was flipping through his old scrapbook of unsolved cases. And it makes him so frustrated because those, those killers are still out there and he wants to deliver justice to them. But he's still plagued by the ghost of the young man that he killed. But he has to conquer his demons, and then that ghost will go away. So he goes back home, and he flips through the old scrapbook of homicides again. And, um, he, he's, like, looking them over, and he's thinking, and he's like, mm. And he stumbles across this, uh, middle-aged couple that was killed, and linked to the presumed killer, Dr. Tenma. Oh no! And he looks across the window, Hey, there's a guy with a gun! Ah! Oh wait, no. <laughs> it was imagination. So he lost his trail of thought because he was, he was... He was distracted by the ghost of the boy that he had killed. And as he's walking home, he suspects someone's following him, so he pursues whoever it might be. But again, this might just be imagination because he's seeing the ghost of the boy again. And he goes to his psychiatrist. And um, he's like, the reason why I killed that boy is because I felt he was evil. And I was thinking back to my old cases, and there's that one case in particular. And now that doctor is sending a letter to another doctor that was his student. And he actually had Tenma as a student as well. The detective goes to speak to the daughter of um, one of the murder victims. And he's asking about her connection to Mr. Schubert. And the woman was a um, maid for her like 20 years ago. Basically, this detective's just going around investigating, trying to figure out who this. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what's going on, basically. <laughs> and then, incidentally, he's almost killed by some falling rubble. Maybe. Maybe it was incidental, maybe it was on purpose. He's learning more about Schubert and his past and these various people who have been killed. And we learned that this one man who was killed used to be a foster child and grew up in an orphanage. This running theme of bird watching going on that is apparently really suspicious for some reason. Jeez, and then he's almost hit by a truck! This guy almost dies so many times! So he goes back to his psychiatrist guy and he's like, I looked into all my old cases and, I mean, they're all pointing in the same direction. Killings were all orchestrated in a certain way so that it would gradually isolate Mr. Schubert. And then there's this name, Johan, that keeps popping up. And the, the psychiatrist guy is like, Well, <laughs> as it would happen, Johan is a name that I know. I mean, let's be fair, Johan's a pretty common name, but you might be onto something. And then the detective remembers, like, Oh, when I was at Mr. Schubert's place, they mentioned a Johan. All right, let's watch one more episode. Relatively speaking, that episode wasn't so um, action-packed, really, but it was definitely important and interesting. So Johan's walking through the park, and he's chatting with some children who are playing, like, I don't know, warrior or whatever. And he's like, oh, so you want to conquer the world? What kind of world do you want to make? Johan takes care of all of these kids. I guess, or volunteers at a place where the kids are being cared for. The detective was watching him and he's like, mm, this kid's bad news. But then the detective goes out um, to, to coffee with his ex-wife, I guess, talking about their daughter and how much he misses her. And he's like, so what do you think I'll be able to see her? And, you know, the wife says, you know, I'll ask her again and see if she wants to see you. And she's like, you know what? You seem different. You seem like you used to be, and it makes me really happy. So then he continues his investigation, and he's talking to these people who I guess are named Liebert, apparently. I, maybe he's just looking for Johan? Apparently their son is named Johan Liebert. That can't be right. And he's kind of like, they seem so ordinary, but that makes them suspicious. And so then he's suddenly like, you know what, those baby pictures that I saw of the so-called Johan Liebert. I don't believe it. He looks totally different. It's impossible. So he checks out the birth certificate, and he's like, well, I mean, it's, 
still doesn't seem out of the ordinary. But then it comes out that there was a big fire at the city hall four years ago, and all the paperwork was destroyed. So then it's like, aha, that's the missing link. Oh, the detective psychiatrist knows the doctor that Tenma went to and went to school with. And they're talking about, could this kid Johan possibly be the serial killer? Let's show a picture of Johan to that Jurgens guy and see how he reacts. And the detective's running through the, the graveyard trying to find a Johan Liebert. He does. He eventually finds a grave for a two-year-old baby. A, a dead two-year-old. Marked Johan Liebert. So the Lieberts reissued a birth certificate after the fire to make it look like their son was still alive. But the detective is like, I, you know what, this is great. I can't talk right now though. I have to go home because maybe my daughter is going to call and want to see me. And sure enough, he gets a phone call from his little girl. Yay! <gasps> but then a knock on the door and it's Johan, I guess. So this guy, Dr. Gillen, is talking to Jurgens, asking about, do you know this Johan kid? Oh, it's weird. He colors on the photo and gives him black hair and is like, I saw him. And then uh, he's gonna kill himself with a pen! Oh no! <laughs> so anyway, Johan has gone to the detective's house and he's like, Hi, we met at Mr. Schubert's house and I tried to call but you didn't pick up so I just came over to say hey! So the detective goes out to the bar with uh, Johan. And Johan knows all about him, all about how he killed the boy and how he stopped drinking. And he's like, yeah, I know, I, I knew about that. Am I mistaken? Johan's like, tell me about that. I'm writing a paper about the rights of the child and stuff. And considering the kid you killed was only 17, I just, I'm, I'm curious about, you know, how you passed judgment on him and killed him. And the detective starts getting all offended that he would ask these questions. And Johan's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. And Dr. Gillen and the psychiatrist, the other doctor, are, are worried that they can't get in touch with uh, the detective. They're like, well, maybe he's meeting his daughter, but it's kind of late. I mean, this is, this is weird. And now we're finding out via Johan that the boy that the detective killed when he was drunk was at, at went to the orphanage that I guess Johan went to. The detective demands a note from Johan. Why? What, what, what's, what's your purpose, Mr. Schubert? Who are you? Johan leads him up to the roof, and he follows. And Johan's like, I get the feeling that when you shot the boy, you weren't drunk. And you only drank afterwards as an alibi. When you shot him, were you just passing judgment on him as an executioner? You were sober, calm, and you just decided to do it? Johan's like, mm. You are the evil one here. You don't deserve to go meet your daughter after doing something like that. Whew! And he offers him a drink, and then... Ugh. Oh, and now we're learning that the detective is dead! Johan strikes again, so evil! I kind of figured he'd die, but he was this close. You know, he totally had it. Ugh. Anyway, that's the end of those two episodes. The next um, monster video that you'll see from me will be an examination of episodes 30 through 37. So I'll just see you next time for that. Bye!